I could, most people, some of them know me. I do a lot of running, so they see me, you know, around the city. But we have to consider something. I know there's a lot that's on Beauchart, and it's on Wilson Way and Autumn Way, and it's been vacant for a number of years. I kind of know the story about that. We don't need to go on that. But the weeds have gone over four, four feet high. And I'm also writing a couple of people here, Rudy and David, so some of those people know them. Uh, the other thing I just want to say is... Um, I don't know who's responsible for those lots. I know on one of them it's an absentee owner. You know, we're never going to find her. I know what's going on there. One's in trouble and the other one's out of the country. Uh, the other thing I just want, last thing I want to say is, no, I already said that. We're done. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Item 1A, Consent Agenda. All matters listed under Consent Agenda are considered to be routine by the City Council and will be entered, in, entered by one motion. There will not be separate discussion of these items. If discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the Consent Agenda and will be considered separately. Consider approving the following reports. The May 25th, 2021 meeting minutes, June 6, 2021 meeting minutes, May 2021 financials, court report, permits, inspections, and code enforcement, Fire report, police, dispatch, and animal control, streets and park maintenance reports, EDC previous meeting minutes, EDC previous workshop minutes, EDC April 2021 financials. Uh, I would like to have a motion tonight to accept the consent agenda with the exception of the May 25th, 2021 meeting minutes and the June 6, 2021 meeting minutes. May I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda less than May 25th, 2021 and the June 6th, 2021 meeting minutes. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Vote for my left, please. Charles, yes. Evan, yes. Larue, yes. Mullen, yes. Post, yes. Motion carries. Item 2. 2A, discuss and or take action to interview applicants for the Economic Development Corporation Board of Directors in open session consider making an appointment. Uh, council will uh, listen to both uh, applicants. We have two applicants tonight, and um, then I'll take I'll ask for nominations once they both have introduced themselves. We'll take them as they uh, filled their applications in. Mr. Keith Bond, would you come up to the microphone, introduce yourself to council, and uh, council may want to ask you a few questions. We'll see. Good evening. My name's Keith Bond. I live at 262 Overlook Trail in Gun Barrel City in what I call the best little subdivision in Gun Barrel Tamarack. Council, have any questions? I don't have any questions. Uh, can I speak? Yes, absolutely. Oh, well, I don't know him personally. I do go to their meetings. Uh, it's a professional meeting. There'll be uh, POA meetings once a month. Microphone. Oh, I go to their meetings once a month, most of the time. And it's a professional meeting. It's not uh, networking or anything like that. They have a set agenda. They've got a budget. And uh, like I said, I don't know him personally, but I do know he's for the city and for Tamarack. Okay. That's all I know. Mr. Mayor. Go right ahead, sir. I've also attended a, man, a number of Tamarack's meetings, and um, I appreciate uh, the professionalism and the hard work and dedication that this man has shown to that um, POA, There's, they're very active. I'm glad to see people on the east side more active. I'd like to see them more interested in getting involved in what's going on in the city, voting. I appreciate your interest in this position. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Any further questions? Yes. What is your specific intent and expectation of the EDC board position? Well, my specific intent is to come in with a fresh, open mind with no preconceived notions of what or agendas and to help the growth of Gun Barrel. I, I was a weekender from 1986 until 2015. I became a permanent resident. I was no longer a weekender. And I'm, I'm pro Gun Barrel. I want to see it grow. But I still like to see it keep that little small town character that it has. Thank you. Mr. Bond, what, 
what are you when you say you're pro growth? What what are you, uh, what's your vision? What what would be your uh, choice if it was all left in your hands to decide? <laughs> oh, that, <laughs> that that that's a kind of a loaded one. Uh, I'd like to no, but very good. I'd like to see more businesses that are catering to not just the tourists, but to the community. You know, we've got we've got a strong community of varying ages, incomes, and all. I'd like to see the parks department beefed up. I would like to see, you know, things. I can't think of any business in particular, but just growth. And again, keeping that, being a larger city, but keeping that small town feeling. Mr. Bond, what would you say has been the most significant uh, contribution that the EDC has made to Gun Barrel in the past year? Well, I know that they've done two projects over in my, or one project over in my area, and I believe that is the W. Haas, which has greatly, that, that strip along 195, the old 198, you know, has really been revitalized, and that it's visible. I'd like to see more of that along 198, 334. You know, the, the storefronts get the customers in. And if the EDC can help with the businesses getting the storefronts, then the business will come. Any further questions? I have one. Yes, Mr. Bond, the city council in its infinite wisdom, arguably, made a decision uh, in the recent past to have the executive director of the EDC report directly to the city council. What's your opinion of that decision and that practice? That's, if, if the city council voted and decided that, then I would support the city council on their decision to, do, to, to have the director report directly to y'all. Thank you. Any further questions? Thank you, Mr. Bond. Thank you all. It. The next applicant is Mr. Brian Curl. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm Brian Curl. I live at 111 Lost Forest Road. We just celebrated our first one year anniversary here. We moved here on June 10th. Um, I spoke to you guys earlier when I. Uh, made myself available to the Planning Zoning Committee, and um, I've had some discussions with some people, and so the uh, EDC, some people reached out, said that, that might be a good good position for me to think about, and um, being a small business owner, I've had my own business for 35 years, so I kind of know what it means to run a small, small business, what it means to a community to have a small business, and, and how you can influence that community with the, um, the projects and the things that you make yourself a part of. And um, so I, I, I think too, with the, uh, seeing all the stuff that we've done with the, uh, um, the, the comprehensive plan and all that, I'm, I kinda got my, I guess my, my feet wet a little bit. I love the idea of the facelift of some of these businesses. I know you guys have reached out to some of these small businesses. The one down here, I think it's a, I don't know if it's a body shop or whatever, they got the old tow truck, but the, the front is real nice. The solar shades guys done a great job. I don't know if you guys have seen the back of that too. That place is really amazing. Just like um, he spoke earlier about the W house, things like that are really, um, you know, it, perception is reality. And I think that gives a, 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 a real good feel for people that come into our, our city for the first time. I think too, the uh, idea of developing Big Chief is a, is a big thing You know, we've spoke before and I've said this a couple times that if we're at the hub of the um, of, of the lake and the lake community, then we need to, we need to build on that. I mean, we really need to make ourselves known as 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 the hub of that community. And by doing that, making everything more accessible, putting some of the maybe some ideas or you know how they do the retail on the bottom, they do you know whether it be hotels or condos or or short term rentals on top, those type of things, you know. It, it's more inviting to people um, from outside of our community. They're going to spend some money, um, generate some sales tax revenue. That's all good for us. 
and at the same time they've got a place to park their boat or their sea do or they've got a place to come and and um, because so many of our our ramps are private um, there are some public but I think having that access like that just invites people to spend a lot more money and uh, spend a lot more time in uh, in our city which I think is by the way if you've lived in Dallas in any period of time this is heaven those of you that think this is not, you haven't lived in Dallas very long. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Crow. You don't want me to talk anymore. I'll get going. <laughs> Council? I would like to hear the uh, same question I asked before. What is your specific intent for being a member of this board? Well, my dad taught me very early. I have two ears and one mouth, so I'm going to sit and uh, kind of soak everything in. I want to see where everybody's at, see where everybody's heartbeat is, and and what their, their hot buttons are, and I'm not gonna come in there and just shoot my mouth off for the sake of shooting my mouth off. So uh, I wanna listen to things like that, but I think my, my strong suits are I'm able to bring people in the coaching profession, you bring people from all different backgrounds, all different beliefs, all different areas of, uh, of life, and bring them together for a common cause, and I'm good at that. I'm good at bringing people together like that. I'm good at kind of mediating things of that nature, and, and um, um, I've got some ideas. I'm a type A personality, there's no doubt, but um, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna listen a lot, and then um, I, I'll for sure have my two cents. But I, I definitely think there's, there's so much room for growth, but we don't wanna get in each other's way either. We wanna work together. We need to be more of a, um, there's strength in numbers, and uh, I'd like to see everybody kind of work together a little bit better. Maybe some fresh, fresh ideas will help that. You mentioned Big Chief and uh, hotel and what could be done there. Probably 95% uh, of the people who live in Gunbarrel cannot afford to stay there for a night. Citizens here are medium income, maybe, or lower. What would you, as an EDC director, to do, or you think you should be doing for many of the people in the city? What, what do they need in terms of services? Is it more retail? Is it more... We talk about jobs, we talk about sales tax increase, but what would, what would you think would be the role that EDC might play for the, for the common citizen of the country? Well, well, I think some of the medium businesses and, and um, man, light manufacturing and things of that nature could generate some stuff. And again, I'm new, so I'm just, you know, but I went last year to um, um, that crazy rally at Lee, that was the first time I'd ever been to Lee Park. That was a, that was a event in itself. But I also understand that years ago that that used to be an open campground and other things, but then I heard there was some kind of riffraff that kind of moved in, so we kind of had to disband. But if we had some more stuff like that again, I mean, that makes, you know, camping is fun. I mean, I did it as a kid and was in 4-H, and, and so that's, and that's not that expensive for people, you know, and, and that allows, I don't know how much, you know, land, I'm still kind of learning all that, but if we have some more space like that, maybe we could get back to some things that were, you know, um, um, I mean, obviously we'd have to have some guidelines and some patrolling of that area, but I think those types of things will really, really help. And I, and I truly believe that, um, you know, I've always said this, I, I, there's a lot of good people here. You know, I, I think the greatest thing I've ever had is every time I, I leave a, a store, somebody says, have a blessed day. Boy, I'm telling you, Dallas, they're just screaming at you, got your mask on wrong. So I think here there's so many good people that want to work and they want to do something. And, uh, I think if you just gave them an opportunity like that with some maybe some light manufacturing, some some maybe some blue collar uh, jobs of that nature, I think everybody would be willing to work and and make better themselves. You currently sit on the planning and zoning uh, board, correct? Yes, sir. How would you characterize your experience on that board? It's been great. I mean, I've made some good friends, and and she doesn't even know some of the people that lived in my neighborhood were on that committee, and and um, but I, I like. You know, I think that's the other thing about a small uh, small town is you can you can interact with those people in and away from these committees too, and you kind of learn a little bit. Um, uh, Mrs. Weller, for and since she's been here forever, and I've learned a lot from being around these people and kind of how things work, how things go. Some people that have had some experience with these committees, um, and and so you know, I mean that that's good. You know, I, I think you know again. I got two ears and one mouth, and I'm going to try to use those to the best of my ability. What about any long-term developments in uh, the city in terms of gun barrel? It seems to me like 
the two main arteries here, one of these days we're going to need a loop or something around this town. We need to be coordinating this maybe with Maybank, Seven Points, and others. What would, what would you see your role uh, there? Would EDC have a role or anything like this? Well, I, I definitely think if, if it's going to benefit us economically, we need to have a, a, a role in that. But I think, too, um, there was something said earlier, and if I'm getting off track, tell me. But there was something that was mentioned to me in Athens about a huge community center that's not just for, you know, it's just a, a workout room for older people or things like this, but they're actually doing some research and doing some different studies and, and uh, stuff on nutrition and wellness and, and, and a lot of different activities. And uh, I, I think something in here with obviously our, our mean uh, uh, age being 60 to 65, I mean, that's, and that's in my wheelhouse. I mean, I'm 62, so those things are important to me. Mm -hmm. And as you get older, especially being in the industry that I'm in, I understand the importance of that. And um, I've got an 86-year-old dad. I moved here recently. And I can tell you right now, it's rejuvenated him. But to have him be able to go someplace other than just my house every 15 minutes right. would be wonderful for him so he can generate some friends and some things of that nature. And also, but get activity. You know, And I'm not just saying go in there and stick him on a treadmill and tell him to be quiet for 30 minutes. But you know, some things that are really interactive with our, our, our older uh, uh, citizens in, in, in Gun Barrel. Thank you. Richard? I, I wanted to ask you a question that one of them asked, and I was going to ask you what kind of business, and I was going to give you the stipulations. It can't be chicken or Mexican food. No, you can't not. bring up Chick-fil-A. No. And I figure I'd stymie you with that. So. No, un un unbeknownst to my dad, he and I, we laugh about it now. We didn't laugh about it then, but I uh, had a marketing degree. Um, I played football at North Texas, got a marketing degree, and quit Frito-Lay after uh, 11 months, a Fortune 500 company, to pursue a job in personal training. Two years later, I opened my first gym, and 35 years later, I've, uh, I've still got my facility. We train um, athletes um, from the ages of five. I've got 10 or 15 kids in the NFL, Major League Baseball, um, golf, everything. And um, so my dad, he doesn't say too much now because I never borrowed money. But trust me, there was, a, there was a time when he thought I'd lost my mind. But I've been in that industry for a long time. We work with autistic and Down syndrome kids too, which is a really special thing. We actually helped um, generate a park there in Richardson for those type of kids so their parents can, while they're taking them on a walk, they can take them to the park. There's actually stuff for them to interact with physically and um, as well as mentally. And we've got a lot of those kids. In fact. Two of them are on my uh, uh, payroll, and I'll, I challenge the rest of my coaching staff that if they were half as engaging as those two guys, I'd be, I'd be in good shape. So, you know, we've, we've done things like that, and that's the industry I've been in. Um, and obviously when you work with that many different people uh, that closely, and, uh, and when you work with people's children, you have to remember that's the most precious thing in the world to anybody as a child. And when, you, when somebody gives a child to you, that's a lot of responsibility. So we've been doing that and doing it at a real high level, and we're real proud of it. Well, I, I, for one, I'm, I, I really appreciate your candidness with your answer. It's, you kind of struck a nerve with me when you talk about, you know, when you have someone's child in your custody, it's the most precious thing. My kids are all older now, and, and I don't view the people of Gun Barrel as children because these are adults, but I view our role as council as being very similar to that. We're responsible for their well-being, we're responsible for their money, and every decision we make is not about anyone behind this desk, it's for the people out there. So uh, it, it heartens me to hear that you see that, see things that way. Thank you. Pat. Any further questions? Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you. Council, I'll ask for a nomination and then a motion to appoint a candidate by name followed by a second and a vote. Uh, each vote must have a majority in order to be appointed. We have two candidates. Both of them seem very well qualified to me, but there's only one open position. I'll open it up for nomination. Mr. Brown, I'd like to make a motion to nominate uh, Mr. Keith Bond for this position. I have a nomination for Mr. Keith Bond. Is there a... I'll second. A motion and a second. I have a nomination with a second. Vote for my left, please. Y'all's yes. Evan, yes. Rue, no. Mullins, no. Wilster, yes. We have three votes to two. Mr. Bond, you've been appointed to the EDC board. Congratulations. Um, you'll be in contact with Ms. Cooper, and she will uh, 
uh, take you through an orientation. So, very good. Item 2B, discuss and or take action to approve a collection contract between the City of Henderson County Tax Office for the purpose of collecting property taxes for the period of October 1, 2021 through September 30th, 2022. May I have a motion, please? <coughs> Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to discuss and or take action to approve a collections contract between the city and the Henderson County Tax Office for the purpose of collecting property taxes for the period of October 1, 2021 through September 30, 2022. I have a second. Second. Mr. City Manager, you want to elaborate a little bit on this? Uh, this contract is a requirement annually for the city to enter in with the county of Henderson Although we don't collect property taxes and have not collected property taxes for quite some time, there were or are still delinquent taxes from that period when we did collect taxes. So even though we, it's been a while, uh, having a contract with Henderson County, they will pursue those delinquent taxes from the period of time when we did have a property tax. And it is an annual requirement that we renew that contract with the County of Henderson. Thank you. <clears throat> Discussion? What, what period of time are we looking at for this? Can you give for an delinquencies? Yes. You're they, yeah, they would go back pre-90s. Yeah. Pre yeah. Pre-1996. Okay, yeah. pre-1996. Yeah, pre-1996 we did have property tax. We don't now. Further discussion? Vote for my left, please. Y'all's yes. Evan, yes. LaRue, yes. Mullen, yes. Foster, yes. <clears throat> Item 3A, discuss and or take action to approve a 15-year fixed rate of 3.71% for a $500,000 loan from Southside Bank to the Gunbarrel City Economic Development Corporation for purchase of additional land for the development of Big Chief Landing. Um, <clears throat> as I hate to do this, Council, we're going to adjourn into executive session pursuant to uh, item 551.072, deliberations on, about real property. Um, the time is 6.57 p.m. Go. Ms. Cooper.
We will reconvene you back into open session. The time is 7.17 p.m. May I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve a 15-year fixed rate of 3.71% for a $500,000 loan from Southside Bank to the Gun Barrel City Economic Development Corporation for purchase of an additional land for the development of Big Chief Landing. Second. I have a motion and a second. Vote from my left, please. Charles, yes. Evan, yes. Through, yes. Mullins, yes. Most, yes. Motion carries. Item 3B, discuss and take action to consider approving the 2021 bylaws prepared by the Governance Committee and passed by the EDC Board. Ms. Cooper. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Are these the same bylaws that we turned down last month? Yes, they are. Why are they back before the council? Uh, because our president requested that they come back and the board agreed. Ms. Cooper, was there any discussion from the board with uh, consideration for the vast discussion that was had at the council meeting regarding the specific call outs that we made? No, there wasn't. Was there an attempt to do another comparison? I mean, Ms. Mullins did one, but the board didn't do one that was adequate. Was there any discussion about doing that? No, I did recommend that they incorporate the suggestions from council before bringing it back, but they did not. Does anybody on council wish to make a motion on this? Well, Ann did her markup. I thought they were pretty good. Uh, I did agree. I disagree on a couple of items. Uh, Ann, do you want to support your markups? Well, yes, we can't. Sir. We can't do the ones that she did a markup because the board hasn't approved those. Well, I could go back if we approve them. Well, but that's something. I don't want to approve something that we are not looking at and not reading. I, I would like to see a. Personally, I would like to see a finished set of bylaws come to this council that has, that's been completed. Um, and, I, and I wish that your board would do that. But I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying, Ms. Evans, that, that Ms. Mullins did a good job on, on making changes, but that's something the board really needs to approve. The, the, has the board approved these bylaws since they came back from the attorney? Mm -hmm. I thought they had. Yes, the board has approved them. Um, actually, the attorney wasn't technically all finished with them. He just gave up. Okay. All right. Mayor? Yes, sir? Suggestion. Uh, I appreciate Dan's hard work on looking at these uh, bylaws. I think we're kind of kind of ending the end of our rope here. I'd, I'd like to suggest that our uh, move that we take our comments, send them back, back to the board for their review and approval. It, it, it's really our it's really our responsibility to approve the bylaws. They right. they come the, the board has made suggestions, whether there were any changes made or not. They come to us. We as the city council have to take a, take some action to do something with them or don't do something with them. Well, we I, said this back and forth a couple of times now. Anne has had some excellent comments. I'm willing to vote to approve her version of the bylaws uh, if, if we're going forward in order to keep this moving and get it done and get it off our plate. I think that's where we are. I understand your comment, sir, but that's not what's on the agenda. The agenda is to, to approve the bylaws as prepared by the governance committee, not the Mrs. Mullins' edits. And what I'm asking for, and we have, we have, given them guidance, we have told them that this, what they have presented isn't acceptable because it doesn't incorporate the um, resolutions that we've passed or the job descriptions that we have passed, um, and they haven't changed the bylaws to be what we have asked them, what we have recommended to change, not that they're under any obligation to, 
make those changes, but they've brought back the same exact set of bylaws. So approving the ones that Ms. Mullins has put forth isn't something we can do because it's not what's on the agenda item. And the agenda's written wrong because we can change the bylaws the way we want them written. But not under this agenda item, well, we cannot. Wrong. Not under this agenda item, we cannot. It says to consider approving the 2021 bylaws as prepared by the governance committee, and and passed by the EDC board, and they have not, um, that's not the ones that Ms. Mullins did. Mr. And Mayor, that is what I was requested to put on the agenda. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I just want to register. We table this then until uh, we can send them. Excuse me, Mr. Yall was speaking. Thank you. I, I just want to register. I, Having read through this version again and again and again, I can't help but question why does the board choose to want choose to? It appears to circumvent city ordinances within the within the the city ordinances specifically stipulate certain points that have to be included in the uh, bylaws, and it seems like they're trying to relitigate city ordinances through the bylaws. I'm not understanding why this is still happening. This is not the work of a competent board. They understand what they're doing can't be done. They keep sending it back. I'm questioning what is their rationale for doing this? This should have been done months ago. We've asked them, we've, we've coached them, we've provided them leadership, expert. We've provided them every possible tool and all we've asked for them to do is just listen and provide something that we will all agree on. And first of all, it has to, it has to be legal and it has to fit the law. Our ordinances are written I'm, I'm questioning what is the logic here? Why are we still doing this? Or is it illegal? I'm not saying it's illegal. I'm saying it doesn't conform with existing city charter. Correct. For example, who does the, the uh, EDC director report to? One specific point, just that one point all by itself. Okay, well, we discuss that at the executive session. It's more than discussed. It's been decided, and it's been made part of the city ordinance. It's, it's actually in the charter. It's now part of our charter, and they're attempting to relitigate that through their bylaws. They don't have the option to do that. If I get pulled over for speeding, I don't get to write a new law just because I want to make it fit what my speed was. We don't yet have a motion. I'm sorry? We don't yet have a motion. To discuss. Do I have a motion? Do I have a motion? Item fails due to no motion. Ms. Cooper? Yes. Please go back to your board and have them finish the work that they've started with the bylaws, incorporate the changes that we've asked for, and take out the unnecessary items, the, the things that were in the notebook, the, the EDC handbook, the 18 pages or whatever it was of the EDC handbook that were copied and pasted in there, fix them up, and then bring them back to this council, something that we can approve. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cooper. Uh, no need to walk away just quite yet. We got one more item for you. Discuss and or take action to defer payments on slapping good barbecue loan. Um, I did read, where did I put those? I believe this was a motion by your president to do this. Yes. Is he here tonight? Mr. Lawrence, could you come to the mic? Yes, sir. So what's up with the slapping good? Why do you want to suspend their payments? I'm sorry? Why do you wish to suspend the payments for slapping good? It was a discussion payment. by the board that due to the difficulties that they have had with procuring a satisfactory space and getting the correct permits, et cetera, they have not been able to open that facility. Their loan payments had restarted, and due to the financial difficulties caused by COVID, their business had been off, and it was a financial burden to them to make these payments. So. Our board, I brought it up as a motion. It was seconded, and it was unanimously approved to suspend their payments with council's approval until a month after they were able to start business. 
and it was it was the feeling of the board that it was just the right thing to do. They're they're just pouring out money and they can't have any income. So is your understanding the, that uh, they're having difficulty getting moved in, the getting permits approved and things of that nature? They're having some difficulty. We've asked Ms. Cooper to look into it. I don't know if she resolved, if she found out anything or not. Okay. But it's, well, it's really not our business why. We just were trying to do the right thing for the people. Uh, you mentioned permits, and I know there's been a, a, a ton of social media uh, comments on this item. Um, let me just be very clear, and I'll ask the city manager to correct me if I'm wrong because I haven't talked to him about it in the last few days. The folks at Slappin' Good have not graced this building asking for any permits or for any plans to be approved at this point in time. Okay. Um, and I have had discussions with their contractor and they have not brought him any plans. So um, I'm a little concerned about extending or deferring payments. I'm especially concerned about deferring payments until a month after they open up. What do you do if they don't open up? Then we would make it a, a, a time period to where they, they default or the, the whole project goes into default that's already in the contract, I, I would imagine. I, this well, was uh, my, well and, and what we, you're asking us to do is change a contract, and you didn't present us with another contract to be changed. And um, you, I don't believe we can do that. Okay. So I don't believe we can change the existing contract. Effect. Uh, Ms. Cooper, did you contact the attorney on that? The contract is as it says. It is the loan is in default. And no, we don't have the option. Yes, I checked with Jeff. We don't have the option of just deciding that we're gonna delay payments. Okay, I wanna um, be real clear. I, I would like nothing better. In fact, anybody who follows me on social media knows that I have recommended slapping good barbecue to anybody that asked me about barbecue. I've eaten barbecue all over this country. Uh, I was fortunate enough to travel for 15 years, and I have had barbecue from North Carolina to Louisiana to South Texas to Kansas City and places in between, and I've never had any that's any better. But um, Slappin' Good has been um, attempting to get opened up here, and they do have a lease on a building, but for whatever purposes or whatever reasons, they haven't been able to open up yet, and it is not anything to do with the city. This, and Mr. City Manager, would you please correct me if I'm wrong, but they have not presented any plans to city? You are correct. They have, have they not asked presented for any, any plans or themselves or through their contractor. Okay, or to their contractor. Mr. Yalls, you had a comment? I just wanted to clarify for the record. Social media has just been abound with information suggesting that City Hall and the EDC both have, I don't want to say conspired, but have taken every opportunity to try to prevent this business from opening. And based on what you've just said, they've not even asked us for, they haven't started the ball rolling to even open themselves. So in fact, we've done absolutely nothing to stop them. We've done nothing to get in their way. We've only tried to uh, assist them and the EDC is, even trying to work with them financially to try and help them out. So is there anything more we can do at this point other than just we haven't done anything to stop them? If they want to open, they'll open, right? That's correct. And uh, myself, the building official, Mr. Wiggins, as well as Mayor Skeins, we have all three of us worked in conjunction together so that we were all on the same page, privy to the same conversations. Uh, some of the allegations that are being uh, levied against the city are just uh, absolutely not true. Uh, we have not gotten in their way. They've not presented us with a proposal for their new restaurant for us to deny. It has not come to the building official. There have been no plans presented. Uh, so the insinuation that it is the city holding this up are blatantly false. Thank you. I was in that meeting as well. Yes, you were. And... Uh, Yes, uh, they, they basically are misrepresenting their position. Okay, is there a motion? Do I hear a motion? Motion fail or the item fails due to lack of a motion. Item 4A, public hearing for request to replant lots 870 to 872 in the Lou Bay subdivision belonging to Terry and Brenda Hensley, physically located at 138 Wild Grow Drive into one lot, lot 870R. Public hearing is now open. Is there anyone here who wish to speak on this item? 
Public hearing is now closed. Item 4B, discuss and or take action to approve the replatting of lots 870 through 872 in the Loon Bay subdivision belonging to Terry and Brenda Hensley, physically located at 138 Wild Grove Drive into one lot, lot 870R. May I have a motion, please? I make a motion to discuss or take action to approve the replatting of lots 870 through 872 in the Loon Bay subdivision belonging to Terry and Brenda Hensley, physically located at 138 Wild Grove Drive into one lot, lot 870R. I have a second. Second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? Vote from my left. Y'all's yes. Evan, yes. Through yes. Mullins, yes. Post yes. Uh, item 5A, discuss and or take action on the need for a pro forma on the EDC slash YNC development project to be prepared by the executive director. Uh, council at this time, we will convene into executive session pursuant to 551.087 economic development matters. The time is 7.33.
7.43 p.m. There's no motion needed. Uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? Motion, motion. to adjourn. We are adjourned. Thank you all very much.